Hello. I recently read a paper entitled A Sign in the Sky Dating the Origins of the Iroquois Confederacy. This paper argues for the foundation date of around 1142. The primary and strongest of these arguments is a study of historical eclipses. Across the various versions of the Peacemaker story, an eclipse is mentioned as a key event. The authors point out that the 1142 eclipse is the only really good contender. Two other arguments are presented by the paper. One of these arguments compares references within the tellings of the Peacemaker story to cannibalism and agriculture and compares this against the archaeological record. This argument is interesting, and I have no doubt they've got at least part of the picture, but it's too speculative to convince anybody. The third argument draws from the voyages of Jacques Cartier. Cartier is told in 1534 that the people he encounters have had 33 generations of chief. The authors then compare this number against possible foundation dates and calculate the average tenure of each of these chiefs. They then compare these numbers against the average reign of figures like European monarchs and popes. They use this to discredit the common date of 1451. Two and a half years is an exceptionally short average reign. However, there are a couple of problems with this argument. Namely, it is based on the assumption that the St. Lawrence Iroquoians encountered by Cartier are the same as the Haudenosaunee, which is a contentious opinion, to say the least. I would like to remake this argument beginning with a different point, abandoning Cartier's 33 in favor of something less contentious. Within the Haudenosaunee Grand Council, the position of Tododaho has been held by 146 individuals. This number is reliable because it's a fairly simple thing to keep track of. Between now and the commonly proposed date of 1451, there are 571 years. If we divide this by the number of Grand Chiefs, 146, we get an average tenure of 3.9 years. This is again pretty low. Now, in fairness, we can say that this average is probably skewed at least a little bit by the events of the 1600s, which were an exceptionally bloody time to be alive. But even accounting for this, that average is still lower than expected. For comparison, I went through all of the kings of England and Wessex prior to Richard III, who was the last English king to die in battle. This should not be a fair comparison, as the Tadadaho is not allowed to go to war. Nevertheless, the English kings come out with an average reign of 15.3 years. I then went through and calculated the average reign of the first 146 popes. Many of these early popes were martyred by the Romans. Others were murdered during periods of crisis. Even so, the average pontificate, I think that's the right word, was six and a half years. So, those numbers still don't line up. Even when compared to other sources, the numbers still don't line up. According to Wikipedia, the average reign of a Roman emperor was about eight years, and half of the Roman emperors were assassinated. I personally find it hard to believe that the position of Grand Chief could be more than twice as dangerous as that of Roman Emperor. Now, if we instead compare that 146 against the 1142 date, there are 880 years in between, giving us an average tenure of about six years. The number is still low, but it's only six months off that of the early papal average. I suppose that the numbers being a little bit low are probably the result of the 1600s. The introduction of smallpox and a century of war probably lowered that average by a bit. Or it could mean that the actual date is earlier than 1142. Either way, I'm not qualified to speculate. I hope you found this interesting.